so we are still human and work shouldn't suck was inspired by the fact that um, work largely does suck. Most people wake up in the morning with a feeling in the pit of their stomach, but I've got to go to work today. And because the work's not, a, it's, in, it's not a healthy environment for a lot of people. And um, it's where we spend the bulk of our waking day in our lives. The bulk of our waking life is spent at work. So the, the research that inspired the book and the, or the purpose underpinning it was um, that uh, every single one of us, often this is a, a narrative that goes towards leaders. Oh, it's the leader's job to make sure work doesn't suck. No, if I wake up in the morning to come and engage with you, whether in the room or now as the world has gone hybrid and remote, I've got a responsibility towards the experience I'm creating for you and for me. And it expands into so much more in terms of our well-being, our emotional state, our productivity, our high performance, and the fact that we can actually enjoy ourselves while spending the bulk of our waking day there. I mean, the first question that pops up into my mind is, why is work sucking? <laughs> work is sucking because humans suck. And that's a big statement with a big exclamation mark on the end of it. And when I say humans suck, I don't mean that. I mean, I love humans. I work all day, every day with humans and for humans. Um, I'm the one who's, who's not anti-technology, but I'm saying even in the, in the advancement of tech and what's going on with AI and, and, and the, the speed, we're still human beings working with humans for humans because of humans and we need a human better. But work sucks because we've largely forgotten what to prioritize. Uh, you know, I was in a session this morning talking to some clients and um, a huge global organization, they're reorganizing their performance measurement criteria and the top line that everybody in the business is going to be measured on or is measured on is how much money did you generate for the business? Now, I'm not saying money doesn't matter. Without money, there is no business. But they're making that the number one priority. Mm -hmm. They're not asking how many dead bodies did you leave in, 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 in the road en route to that. They're not asking, well, if you're a leader, how many people left you because of the way you were pursuing that money? They're not asking how much did people grow. Uh, they're asking the wrong questions. And what people don't realize is, if you have a focus and an emphasis on switching people on and growing them, you're going to make the money anyway. In fact, you'll probably make more and you'll probably waste less on human debt. So work sucks because we're prioritizing the wrong things and the human experience is suffering because of it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. But it seems that the disconnect, and I'm sure there are many, is that when you have to do more work, there's a longer roundabout to getting the dynamic at work. To, to work. The quickest route for a company to make money is to prioritize profit. It's long term, not necessarily a good idea, but you can almost understand the incentive as to why companies without some deeper thinking are just going, our people are these money making machines and that's what we prioritize. So is it a case of they're not wanting to put the work to go slightly longer around to build this better uh, culture and system? It's two things. Prioritizing profit is different from prioritizing revenue, turnover. So what they do is they glorify turnover, sales. But if they, when they really come down to the nuts and bolts of profit, what's going out the back door in terms of waste, human debt, uh, recruitment costs, training costs, attrition of human beings, profitability is, is being diluted the whole time. Yeah, we got great sales figures but at what expense? So when you, you get your, your, your semantics around the maths right, if you're prioritizing profit, that's a formula of the constructive behaviors against the sales. Then to your second point about the time or the willingness or the requirement to create environments and culture. What happens is that it's hard work. It's much easier to do what I have always done technically because what I've done for my whole career I now got promoted into a leadership role, for example. Um, again, this is about maths. If you do simple maths. So to this morning's conversation, I, I shared these details and they, their brains were exploding a little bit because they're a bunch of, I won't mention company name, but they're a bunch of actuaries so they can do the maths. Um, and I simply said, if you studied for four years and did a degree, how many hours did you study for? Well, at an average of eight hours a day, which any student in a big degree does more of, over four years, take away holidays and weekends, it was about 10 to 12,000 hours. And then in your first few, call it four years of practice, another 10 to 12,000 hours, 25,000 hours of getting skilled 
training and practicing this thing you do. Then what happens is you do well, you get recognized and you get promoted into a leadership role. How many hours have you done of training mm. or practicing as a leader for what your job is to lead? Not to be an actuary anymore or an accountant or a lawyer or whatever it is or a manager. I mean, or a, uh, a production manager. And also your work is 10 times more complicated because it's not the linear transactional technical stuff you did, it's people. And the job of a leader is as simple as activating the human beings in your charge. That's your job. To, do the, to switch to them on, the best ver- yes. to be the best versions of themselves, uh, coming to a place that's healthy, an environment that's conducive to them, again, spending the bulk of their waking day in a place that's going to give them a quality of life for which the exchanges they earn a living. But now you've had no training and no practice in this thing that is your job title after having had 25,000 hours of being uh, in the technical space. So what you do is you default back to doing what you're comfortable, what you knew and what you got recognized for. Mm. But now you're in someone else's way. And right there is where the problem occurs. Also, business hasn't worked out how to recognize experts and specialists without making them leaders. And this is an ego thing because too many people are in leadership roles, don't want to have someone in their team who's a specialist, who's being acknowledged for their unique capability, earning more than they are. Yes. And so we have to make people leaders. They're very good at making the hammer. They're not very good at leading a group exactly. of people who can co-make the hammers. Yeah.